Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. Today we're going to use the impulse invariance method to map an analog filter response into a digital filter. So how do we do this? Well, the impulse invariance method works by sampling an analog frequency response with a chosen sampling frequency f of s. f of s therefore has a period of t. Now, when we're mapping, our period of t defines how much of our frequency response of our analog system we get. Thus, if we have a larger t, we're less likely to get the higher frequencies, and if we have a smaller t, we're more likely to get everything. So, this can be seen from our example here, where our sampling period of t is fine for the first half of our wave. However, in the second half, we're clearly losing details, so we'd have to choose a higher sampling frequency to accurately map the response. This can also be visualized in the S-plane, where our J-omega, our imaginary axis, shows all the frequencies, and our pi over t, our period, shows what frequencies will be mapped into our new digital filter. You can see by this example that as we have a smaller t, or as t tends to zero, in other words, the sampling becomes infinitely small, that will map the entire left half plane. This would be ideal, however, using an extremely high sampling frequency often isn't ideal as it's very intensive, so we just try to pick a sampling frequency which will best suit our needs. This method, as it does not map the entire left half plane, can add aliasing to our digital filter. Essentially, it's possible that not all of the frequencies which are contained through our frequency response will be mapped when we use a specific sampling frequency. However, if we're using common sense when choosing our sampling frequency, this shouldn't be an issue. So you might be wondering, how are we mapping this S-plane and what are we mapping it to? Well, we are mapping it to the Z-plane. Why are we mapping the left half plane of the S-plane? I haven't alluded to this yet. However, I'm hoping that if you're taking a signal processing course or a control system course, that you should have come across this in the past. Essentially, when we're talking about filter stability, we have to have all of the poles in the left half plane of the S-plane in order for our system to be stable. If our system wasn't stable, we might have an input signal like this. However, our output signal could be growing exponentially. Okay, so now that we have that, why are we mapping it to the Z-plane? While taking the Z-transform, we're essentially converting from a complex transfer function into a system of delays, scales, and shifts. We'll get more into this in a future video, but for now, We'll just go through the method, so hopefully it becomes clear to you. The impulse invariance method maps the left half plane bounded by the pi on t and negative pi on t into the unit circle of the z-plane. Therefore, if you have a stable analog filter, it will result in a stable digital filter. Remember that a stable digital filter simply has all of its poles within the unit circle of the z-plane. Okay guys, I think I might cut this one here, and in the next video I'll go over an example of an impulse invariance question. As always, if you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you, and I'll see you guys in the next one.